Why, hello, dear reader. You've arrived at the Crooked Path, where all ex-husbands go to retire. And welcome back to my channel, Re Good, Draw Bad, where I draw things and then I read things. Or sometimes I read things and then I draw things. If you're interested in the writing process of a professional author about love and loss and friendship, you might really enjoy today's book. The mysterious, anonymously authored Becoming Duchess Goldblatt. First, a too long, didn't watch summary. This anonymous author writes nonfiction as part of her day job. And I'll find you, Miss Anonymous Author, wherever you are. This book is about how Duchess Goldblatt, a Twitter account with a fictional character, blew up for the author and sort of provided all these amazing opportunities for the author in her life. This book talks about raising a child as a single mother and just how much fun it is to be an adult. Spoiler alert, it's not as much fun as you thought. Now, this book is also about trauma and mental health and addictions. So a little bit of a warning there, but I think the author explains it in a way that feels very approachable and she's talking a little bit about her own life story. It's written in a way that's very relatable for people if you don't know a lot about the subject so you can start to learn. If that's a topic that maybe is a bit difficult for you, just note that that is present in the book. So who is the mysterious Duchess Goldblatt? And why is the author so mysterious? In the author's own words, it started as a joke, like most social media accounts do. Duchess Goldblatt is primarily on Twitter. There are some rumors that the author puts in the book herself that perhaps Duchess Goldblatt was on older social media platforms that used to exist. I would like to believe that she was one of Tom's first friends on MySpace. The the majority of the book is learning how Duchess Goldblatt was created, crafted, and eventually celebrated as a quasi-online celebrity within sort of the literary community. It's not necessarily a how-to guide of how to have a popular online presence, but it's definitely a how-she-did guide from the author's perspective of how Duchess Goldblatt eventually took on her own personality and had her own history. She created a community of people who loved most of the things that all of us love. Pet pictures, food pictures, talk Talking about trauma and loss. I mean, that's what the internet's for, right? Goldblatt, according to the author, is an older woman who's a celebrated author, and she just happens to know all the literati, all the paparazzi, all the people who are very important, living in the middle of a big city with a very mysterious and enormous amount of money that she may or may not have acquired from various ex-husbands. Are those ex-husbands still alive? We're not sure. She's not about to tell. This, to me, makes her feel very relatable. She seems to me like the kind of person who might be the life of the party right when the party starts. And she might also be the person who's wearing a lampshade on her head at the end of the party, crying in the corner. Now, Duchess Goldblatt is so interesting and the book is so interesting because the author says she never expected Duchess Goldblatt to become popular at all. It was all just a literary joke, like most of us do, where we go on Twitter or social media and share a few thoughts and leave it at that. However, she was considered really relatable and a lot of people really like what she said and how she said it. But part of the reason why the author hides her identity is because as Duchess Goldblatt became more famous, the author's life often became more chaotic and she had more problems. So it was kind of a double-edged sword. At the start of the book, the author is newly divorced. And when you are newly divorced or you become a single parent by choice or not, uh, a lot of your responsibility change and a lot of your relationships change. And definitely for the author, she had a lot of honest conversation with us as readers about how she struggled with understanding the new world that she was put into. How can I still have good friendships with people around me? And how can I repair the friendships that some of which have been broken by this divorce? And she begins to experience a lot of stress. And as an outlet for some of that stress, she spends a lot of time crafting Duchess Goldblatt Hello. on Twitter. As she lost part of her support network, some of that time was devoted to creating her own new support network in an online community through Duchess Goldblatt. Social media heals everybody. And she did it in a safe way that felt safe for her, where she didn't feel she needed to expose all of her own personal details, but instead created a fictional persona who's both loving and kind and funny and interesting, and turn it into something that everyone else could enjoy and also participate with her in creating joy for other people. Why does the author do this? Why does she decide
trying to create this online persona? Well, I think the main reason she does this is for the reason a lot of us use fiction and fictional characters to help us understand the world in a way that we can understand even if we're going through a lot of difficult things. You know, like if you hate laundry, you can think about what it's like to be a gothic laundress. Maybe that's more fun. Or if you are paying your bills, you can imagine you're a billionaire and these bills are no problem for you. Now back in my day, it used to be a millionaire that everyone wanted to be. However, now today if you're a millionaire, it just means you get to retire before you're 85. Inflation. There is actually a name for this process of using fiction to help yourself and it's called bibliotherapy, which is a name I just love. The act of using fiction for someone who's experienced trauma could be really useful as explained in the book Persuasion and Healing, a Comparative Study of Psychotherapy by Dr. Jerome Frank and he calls the trauma and loss process demoralization. But then we can use various processes like bibliotherapy to help us reconstruct our world so that we can move on from that trauma and loss and not get stuck. I personally love fiction because it helps us make sense of the world from a safe distance and go places we might never get to go. So for example, I can learn what it's like to be a pirate without having to worry about peg legs or wearing an eye patch. Also, not sure I'm a parrot person. You can also learn of the complexities of different kinds of relationships, like romantic relationships in various books and romance novels. Well, not every romance is perfect. <laughs> Diving into a book, you might find a safe space in your imagination to try and understand other people who are very different than you, and you can learn a lot by doing this. And sometimes, if you're going through something, reading about it might actually help you understand what you're going through a little bit more. And one of the reoccurring themes in this book is how Duchess Goldblatt created a safe space for the author so that she could be writing and be creative without feeling like she was being judged as a person. Because as we all know, no one would judge anyone on social media. And this meant also that the author was approached by new people who even turned into new friends. She was trying to reconstruct her own world and her own support network and in this way they saw her as a writer, as someone creative, as someone doing something really different and interesting online. And the author's journey as a single mother who loves her son very much also had to learn how to make adult friends again and she goes through that process and about how kind of difficult it is as an adult to make friends. Now if you're a young person, like not as old as me, it's easy to have friends in school or in the clubs in various groups you're in. You just hang around with people and suddenly you have friends popping up left and right. However, for some reason, once you become an adult, it is harder to make two adult friends than it is to lift 500 pounds. It often feels like you're struggling to keep up the weight of all the things you need to do to be an adult, but then also you need to prove to other people that you're interesting and fun and at least partially balanced enough that they can hang around you. Friendship is magic but it's magically difficult when you're an adult. But as a result of the author's personal journey, she does make new friends. And some of these new friends are some of the best thing that happens to her. So there is a silver lining to some of the bad events in her life. She does actually meet some of her real life heroes throughout the book and she does make friends with them. And so that's just really inspiring to see that you can meet your heroes in real life and they can be even better than you expected them to be. And that's the fun of finding a great friend that understands you, that person is worth the wait. Now, what really attracted to me about this book was pain. Why? Because <laughs> life is pain. Her father that she mentions in the book several times sounds like a wonderful person, whereas there are other people in her life who definitely challenge her, and part of that is because of their problems with mental health and addictions. I don't always enjoy about reading about substance abuse and trauma, but I think in this particular case, the author did a really great job of making it easy to understand why she was sharing these details and how it shaped her life about wanting to try and be the best person she could be and she sort of used I think her dad as sort of a shining example of a good person and the kind of person she wanted to emulate in her own life while at the same time being very honest about issues she faces and what challenges she faces as an adult and why because adulting is hard being an adult is hard now to get on the subject of social media a large amount of this book 
Facebook is dedicated to social media, which is not surprising because that's where Duchess Goldblatt came to life. And the author has sort of a very funny duality to her personality where she spends an enormous amount of time online interacting with people, but she also spends time telling her friends they have to sign non-disclosure agreements if they find out that she's Duchess Goldblatt. And all I have to say about this is that is major introvert energy. But the one thing that's very true is the people who follow Duchess Goldblatt really do like her and they really think that she is an excellent resource for them if they're feeling down or they're feeling depressed. And you can read all about it because there are actual threads of tweets and ways she's responded to people in her book about social media. And so it's a little bit funny but also a little bit jarring to read threads and threads of tweets about how she interacted with different people in a book. You know, like you think of books as dead trees and then you think of Twitter as dumpster fires. However, there's a lot of it and I have to be honest, I definitely skipped over parts of it because I like reading Twitter on Twitter, but Twitter in a book to me just feels wrong. Like I was already convinced this Twitter account was worth following, but part of the fun of Duchess Goldblatt, you'll see that she is a very classy, classy Twitter person, polite, humorous, and even witty. She's actually an example of the kind of person people could be on Twitter if they really wanted to. So if you would like to read about how Twitter could be a positive social media experience, and I can't believe that I'm saying those words in that order, you might really enjoy reading either this book or following her on Twitter. And for the record, what she's done on Twitter is quite phenomenal because it's not easy to be a nice person and be popular. Those two things don't go together. And it's really hard to grow a Twitter account nowadays. I should know. I tried to create a fortune telling cat persona on Twitter that I thought would blow up just in time for this video, but I only have three followers. Why does no and want to learn about cat astrology. I was thinking of providing some brief criticisms of this book, but instead of doing that, I thought I would take a page from Duchess Goldblatt's book and I would have a positive but funny list of how you can live with what I'm calling Goldblattitude. Number one, be a famous writer that no one has heard of. Number two, have a love of humanity that is unparalleled but also a crippling emotional trauma that you must never speak of. Number three, have many, many ex-husbands, some of which have died of suspicious circumstances. Always speak highly of your children in prison. Give motherly advice. It can either be nagging or part of a superiority complex. We recommend both. Always treat others with respect, unless they're your ex-husband, in which case refer them to the elderly home for unpleasant ex-husbands. Be a respectable woman of leisure who is comfortably wealthy but has a very hard time explaining where that wealth came from. Now, I hope if you take anything from this book, it's that you can use your imagination and your creative energy to turn something that was really difficult in your life into something that's amazing. And even better, we don't have to be the center of attention for us to be able to learn to heal through a creative process. And that, I think, is how to live with gold latitude. I thought this was a very enjoyable adult read, so if you're looking for an adult book where you can think through big problems but how to be creative about how to solve them, this might be a really great book for you. And I actually really enjoyed the different aspects of this book. And also, if you're really into conspiracy theories, I have another $8 checkmark to sell you. Thanks so much. As always, please smash that like button, please share this video, and and please subscribe for more fun videos about great books. And as always, stay curious, stay reading.